In all of these structures, the papillomaviruses, the adenoviruses, the picornaviruses, uh, the, the um, plant viruses such as tomato bushy stunt, we see a simple construction principle at work that um, is a little bit like an assembly line, like a factory assembly line. There is, in all cases, a fixed assembly unit. It happens to be a dimer in the case of the coat protein of TBSV. You saw that it was a pentamer in the case of the L1 protein of the papillomaviruses. The same is true of the polyomaviruses like SV40. And you saw that the adenovirus hexon, the trimeric adenovirus hexon, is likewise a mass-produced assembly unit. But in order to determine how that mass-produced assembly unit fits into a defined structure of, of, of larger size, how the, the positioning of that subunit uh, doesn't simply um, lead to errors in the building of a larger or smaller particle. There's a framework or scaffold, just as in the construction of a building, let's say, that ensures accurate pl uh, placement of these mass-produced assembly units. And we've also seen that, interestingly enough, there's a recurring architectural motif that has appeared in the evolution of these structures, and it's a complicated one, so it probably evolved only once um, uh, over and over again. Now, you might well ask, is this the only architectural motif? Why are all viruses um, based on a so similar a building block? And the answer is that isn't the case. There's at least one other. Uh, and that sometimes is called the HK97 fold after the bacteriophage HK97 in which it was discovered. And you can see that this protein subunit looks quite different. It's got some alpha helices. It's a somewhat irregular looking structure. And it's found uh, in the bacteriophage P22 and a large number of other double-strand DNA bacteriophage where um, it forms a, a shell with uh, a, 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 a number of these subunits forming both hexamers and pentamers, so that there are 60 hexamers and uh, 12 pentamers. There are always 12 pentamers in any icosahedral structure, as suggested here. These viruses assemble with an inner scaffold, but the scaffold in this case is discarded by proteolytic uh, digestion in some cases. In this case, it's actually reused. It, it exits from the particle and gets reused in the case of P22. And um, the particle then changes some details of its organization as the scaffold is, exits as part of a process by which the double-strand DNA is injected, actually pumped, if you wish, into the particle at the next stage in assembly. So these are cases in which the shell preassembles around a scaffold. The scaffold is ejected, either chewed up or, or, or literally ejected and reused. And a series of events involving motor proteins uh, are responsible for inserting DNA into these structures. Now, you could ask whether this is true only of bacteriophage. Answer, no. You might anticipate that the answer would be no from what I told you about adenovirus and um, PRD1, for example. Uh, here are two bacteriophage protein subunits uh, that have this sort of structure. But the herpes viruses, of which the herpes simplex one, the cold sore uh, virus, is, is one example, uh, are based on a much more elaborately looped, uh, elaborately decorated version of the same fundamental fold. The structure that we have at the moment is from electron microscopy and not yet at the same resolution that the X-ray structures of these subunits uh, have yielded. But you can probably see in this relatively low resolution representation of the herpes virus that this part, for example, there's a long alpha helix, 
uh, corresponds to the much simpler undecorated fold you see here. And then these are loopy structures that stick out and make the protein subunit much larger and have to do with other interactions that the, uh, that the protein subunit of the herpes particle makes. The herpes virus particle is more complicated, it's both larger and more complicated than the phage particles. And so there are other interactions of that surface, um, uh, of those surface loops that are important.